Oki Itami to to awaka shiki sum. <laughs> we have arrived well at the dear moon. The last summer lunar cycle uh, is just beginning. And I have no skunk calls this morning for a change. Can't believe it, but not a, not a single skunk got caught in a trap last night. So I've got kind of a free morning it looks like, and I've decided to go in chase of a couple of photographs. Um, while I was driving Mahoney to work this morning along this strip here, along University Drive, I was looking at, at this uh, side of the road and I saw running, scurrying across one of the tops of these wooden fences, a squirrel. You know, like an arboreal squirrel, not a ground squirrel. And Lethbridge doesn't have squirrels. <laughs> well, we, we apparently have a couple here and there. Uh, my friend John Nightingale has, on at least one occasion, probably a couple of occasions seen them in his backyard and, and once photographed them um, and there's been sightings you know in the city uh, I think for flying squirrels this one didn't look like a flying squirrel though and it didn't look like a red squirrel which is the other species that it belongs in Alberta is in, indigenous here um, so it wasn't a flying squirrel, I don't think. It wasn't a red squirrel, but what it looked like to me was one of the like classic gray squirrels um, that I grew up with in Western Oregon, <laughs> who I know very well, very well. I have a little history with those gray squirrels. The first time I ever experienced getting bit by a mammal <laughs> was with a gray squirrel. It had gone up this tree in, in downtown Salem uh, on onto this limb and I climbed out after it and I cornered it on that limb because I was climbing out onto the limb and it was out there exposed <clears throat> it had nowhere to go and we were pretty high up and <laughs> that sucker went e -e -e, ran at me and, and bit me <laughs> got me in the hand real good and taught me a lesson don't don't corner animals like that um, <laughs> or you're asking for combat but I'm just, I'm just kind of pausing here because I think up here this might be the fence. See you got a, a spruce tree and stuff. That's going to be kind of attractive to those squirrels. This might be the fence where I saw them so I'm just kind of slowing down a little bit here to keep a better eye out. Anyway, later in life when I was in university uh, in Boston, I, um, I found a baby squirrel, like eyes closed baby gray squirrel and I brought it back to my apartment and I raised it um, I raised it to basically to adulthood and then uh, one day it just it died and I think it died from um, pesticides you know that were being used in the apartment complex where I was living I think it must have got somehow a hold of some cockroach killing stuff so I was pretty sad but I got a little place in my heart for uh, for the the squirrels, gray squirrels or otherwise. Um, they're just like little monkeys, you know. I remember coming home and that guy would, you know, leap onto me <laughs> from wherever he was, come leaping and climbing on my head. It was pretty cool. But yeah, maybe the Lethbridge squirrel population is picking up. I don't know. But uh, out here this morning to try to get a picture of one of them, see who it is. And then I want to go back down to Spopikimi where I was yesterday morning because there's a, a night heron down there and I don't see them too often. They're, they're here, um, but I don't, like, not necessarily in town. They just stop by during their migration here at uh, Spopikimi and, and uh, maybe other places in town. We don't see them during the actual season. So hoping to get a picture of that night heron as well, and we'll see. We'll see if either of them makes an appearance. Check it out. I have located the squirrel. Oh, he's gone on the other side. He's hiding. 
it and see if he emerges again. I'm not sure. Doesn't really look like a gray squirrel. But it doesn't actually look like a red squirrel either. I don't know. I don't see enough of the red squirrels to know their color phases in all the seasons. Okay, well it seems to be a red squirrel after all. You know, getting this good look at it from this angle. Yeah, definitely not a gray squirrel. I'd say that's a red squirrel. The lone red squirrel of West Lethbridge. Thanks for making an appearance. Now I'm gonna go look for that night heron. So here at Spopik and me looking for the night heron. This is the area that I saw him in yesterday, just in those reeds across the pond there. Um, not seeing him there this morning. So he may it may be that he's at the far south end. I might have to go all the way over there to, to check. Or, you know, he could just be here and I haven't I haven't spotted him yet. I gotta spend a few more minutes here on the north end looking at these reeds closely because he'll be right close to the reeds. You know, the herons um their legs are designed to look like reeds <laughs> to the fish, right? So the fish will just be swimming, you know, close into the reeds and stuff, and he'll pass by the heron's legs thinking nothing of it. And then zap. Gulp. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to take a little scan around here and then head to the south end and see if I can pick him up there. I just finished photographing this guy catching a fish. Don't know how they'll turn out though, is it a bit of a distance? Still on the north end and still no sign of the heron. I'm at the wide south pool now and I've got a blue heron, but no night heron yet. Blue Heron's somewhat concerned about me. Can't decide whether I'm a bad guy or not. <laughs> Got another Blue Heron down this way, about mid-pond. I mean, Blue Herons are impressive birds for sure. They usually stick around here, you know, this time of year when the pond is all shallow. They stick around for a good month or so, picking off pike and just hanging out here before the migration. But not so often we get a night heron. So it looks like I'm out of luck on the bird. That's okay. That's how these things go. <laughs> Got to see quite a few uh, interesting animals out here in my short visit anyway. And I have a skunk call now, just across the highway over at the Bridgeview RV Resort. So I'm gonna go pick up that skunk, probably move it to the nature reserve by Indian Battle Park. And it's warming up now. Gonna have to shed a layer, get down to t-shirt. Probably we'll get a rattlesnake call today. I haven't had one in a couple of days, which is which is odd, but it's warming up this afternoon and I expect the kind of the stragglers uh, with the migration to encounter some humans. So we'll see we'll see how that goes. Still haven't got my new hook yet, but it's coming. It's in transit, so maybe I'll even get it today or tomorrow, sometime early this week, have a chance to test her out. Anyway, let's go get that skunk. Oh yeah, he's not too big. I don't know if you want to come at him from this side. Yeah? I don't know if that's any easier. Oh, he's okay here. I got, I got him here.
It's about 12.30 in the afternoon now. I just finished a 40 minute stint on a stationary bike, trying to make some adjustments in the midsection, you know, get my slim and trim winter body going. <laughs> um, I've been training a little bit every day for the, for the last couple of weeks and I've instituted also a, a sober September. Um, last year I did a sober October where I didn't imbibe in any intoxicants, you know, for the whole month of October. This year I decided I'm doing a sober September, so it's going to be a 60-day stint and uh, that I can break on Halloween. <laughs> but any case, um, yeah, that means y'all can look forward to some more of my 1980s style retro physical training montages at some point in the future um, but not today right now we're gonna go look at a rattlesnake uh, there were some people walking on the path behind Stonecrest Point husband and wife couple and the husband I guess came close to a snake had to rattle at him and freaked him out so they're watching the snake I'm gonna go pick him up and get him out of there Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, he's just sitting there, eh? All right. It's kind of spooky when, yeah. you, when you hear them, you know, and you're not expecting it. See if I can see if I can get him before he slips it under the fence. There we go. Oh, nice male snake. Take him back to the den. <laughs> yep, yep, they're all, the females with the babies are already back there and everybody else has been on the way for that. So pretty soon they'll all be huddled at the bend and then once we get our first really good frost, then they'll end it. Yeah. Okay, let's get back to the bend. Oh yeah, for those of you who subscribe from the United States and if you have cable TV, or at least access to Animal Planet, check out their new series called Scaled, S-C-A-L-E-D. plays Friday evenings, and this is a series that features, it started a few weeks ago, features a company from Calgary, Alberta, called Cornell's World Terrariums, who builds custom enclosures for reptiles and amphibians, and they build some really cool stuff. Um, last Friday, just a few days ago, before the weekend, they played episode three, which features yours truly. <laughs> because Cornell's World built this um, rattlesnake enclosure that I'm, the transport case that I'm carrying on my back. So there's an episode about that. It, it played on Friday. I haven't seen it yet. Because up here in Canada, the series hasn't even started playing. It won't, it won't start until sometime in October. Even at that, I don't have cable TV. 
so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to see it at all if there's going to be a, a way I can stream it but either way the the feedback that I've been getting from it uh, from those few subscribers who just happened to to catch it um, has been good my brother watched it the other morning he said it was it was a good job so I'm looking forward to seeing it at some point but I thought those of you especially you know if you help contribute to the expense of this transport case with the fundraiser at the beginning of the year um, check it out because you know this is part of what what you you chipped into um, putting not only building a transport case but I took the opportunity uh, to, to use it for public education on that show so check it out scaled on Friday evenings and if you're not able to like download it sometime during the week and watch it um, like I don't know what the options are I know on their website for some cable companies you can just you can just stream it anytime you want but I know it, uh, this Friday you know when they play the next episode usually they play last week's episode before the current weeks so you should be able to catch it again this Friday evening in any case if you're interested scaled on Animal Planet so let us release this rattlesnake we're far enough down here I'm not going to release him at directly at the den site because there are some people up at the up at the house at the top of the hill um, who were, I knew were kind of watching me. I don't want them to know where the where the den site is. <laughs> we're gonna release this snake right here. This looks like a good place to me. Whoop! If I can get my uh, camera to sit still. And this snake is close enough to the den site. He'll be able to find his way easy, easy. It's way closer than he was when I picked him up. Hey there, buddy. Maybe I'll get a photograph of you for the database, hey? Get this out of the way. might be no nah, I don't think so I was gonna say it might be one of the same male snakes that I picked up from the country club but maybe not you ready to get out of there yeah it could be it's got it's got some of the same design pattern I bet it is I bet it's one of the same ones that I got from the uh, country club maybe he's kind of lost over here I don't know Come on out, bud. I don't know if you can see it, but he's got two brakes on the left-hand side of his design pattern where line, 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 and then he's got a kind of a dot, eh? Hey? That's what I look at for identifications. Let you go over here. Even if he's not from here, if he moves around just a little bit, He's gonna find the scent of other snakes for sure. So hopefully that leads him where he needs to go. It's now late afternoon, early evening, about quarter to five, and our end of the day winds are here right on schedule. <laughs> um, I'm headed over to Paradise Canyon Golf Club where they have a rattlesnake in a bucket for me. And I'll probably take over to Upper Popson area. And yeah, we'll, we'll see what the conditions are when we get to Upper Popson. I'm pretty sure they're going to be blustery.
not Tobias though. <laughs> What's that? Rattlesnake. Motorcycles on the road, there's rattlesnakes out and about. Really? Yep. 